Good morning. Uh, today we're going to be doing a review of uh, the M532. This is Citizen's latest version of the M32 model. Uh, this is going to be a, a presentation just showing you the capabilities of the machine. Uh, while, while we will accept questions, this is not a how-to demonstration. Uh, there's uh, your applications engineers from your various dealers or MCC offices could review how to do the various functions we're going to show you today. Uh, but uh, to start with, uh, as most of you may know, the M is the Citizen CENCOM's top line machine. Its tooling layout, a combination of turret and gang school slide, allows for great productivity and versatility. And let's just take a quick look now at this video, just showing you how the, uh, oh, sorry about that, how the machine, just kind of just a general operation of the machine, give you an idea of how it functions. So you can see we've got a turret, we've got a gang slide, and we've got a back block up here. We're going to be looking, taking a look at the Type 8, which has the programmable B axis on it. As you know, the M series has been around for many, many years. This is the latest version of it. So some of you may be already familiar with the turret gang style layout of the machine, so it shouldn't be too unfamiliar. We do have some neat, new exciting features of the machine that uh, made some significant improvements to uh, productivity abilities. Now in this operation, you're going to see two different cutting operations for different feed rates, different speeds. Programmed independent of each other, but with the SimCom software, uh, it makes it very easy to uh, marry up these two uh, cutting operations. Something we call axis superimposition. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. We have a new back working block with up to nine tools on here. You can see the back operation. Now this allows simultaneous, significant simultaneous machines and very complex operations to be done while the front side is working as well. We have driven stations up here. You can see operations were going on simultaneously while the back work is revolving. We've also had, have this uh, option of a parts pantry unloading system. That again can contribute to some of your uh, productivity gains and versatility. So let's talk about the, the configuration machine. The, the M32 comes in three basic models. We've got a Type 5, a Type 7, and a Type 8. This diagram here is diagramming the Type 8 version. Uh, they all have a turret, they all have a gang block, and they all have a back working block here. The biggest differences in, in how they're configured is uh, with the Type 8, we have this programmable B-axis spindle right here that can rotate 115 degrees. There are four live tools, five turning tools, a uh, 10 station turret, and a station on the back block that can accommodate up to nine tools in the Type 8. The Type 7 configuration has five cross working tools, does not have this back, work, this uh, B axis block, does have this back block and the station turret. Then we have the Type 5, which has uh, the same uh, gang tool layout and turret as the Type 7, but only five static tools on the back block. As you can see here, though, with the Type 8 and the Type 7, with this turret combination with the back blocks, allows simultaneous machining with three tools into a cut at the same time. This has been a hallmark of the M32 for many, many, ever since its inception, as evidenced by this video that we're showing of it, actually an older version showing three tools cutting simultaneously. This is something that
Hey, Glenn, if you're trying to talk over this video and the video has audio, uh, we can't hear you. Now, in your Y axis back tool block called the Y3, there's three positions on the seven and eight that can accommodate up to nine tools. We have uh, three posi two positions that are live, this block here and this block right there. Those are live. This block here is adjustable anywhere within 90 degrees. You can fix an angle at it. This block here would be a static block. This is called the GSE 1610 or these live ones. The 1701, this is the static block that's mounted here. That comes standard with the machine. You also have a GSC 1310. It's not shown in this picture, but it's a cross tool, a live tool that you can mount here and do a cross working operation here on this machine. These all three can be used on the gang slide of the machine. The 1710 and the 16, GSC 1610 are on five and seven. You can see this gang tool block here, the way it's laid out. You've got your live tools We're up here. This block is mounted at 90 degrees. Let's take another quick look at the back block that's in operation. One thing to note, it's hard to see, but it's right down inside right there is the GSE 1310, the crosswalk that's been mounted at 1, Hey, Glenn, you're uh, breaking up there. Try to uh, turn off the audio on the, the video. This position is just a face working, but it can be located 90 degrees for cross working. Barely see it down here, but right down inside here, it's just that 13 it's a live cross working. Several different configuration options for this machine. You can see it better right there, that 1310. Hey, Glenn, if you're about uh, uh, here's this GDF 1701. This is a, a lot static tool block, comes standard with the machine. The GDS 1310 are, are face spindles that mount in here. They're static. Take an ER16, call it. This is the B axis spindle called the SEU 1310. This mounts on the uh, Type 8. It's, it's a, uh, important to note that the Type 7 does not come with this and cannot be added to it. You cannot make a Type 7 into a Type 8. If you want the B-axis on, on an M32, you have to order it from the factory as such. And the GSE 1310, these are the same spindles used in the cross-working block on the gang slide, as well as on the back tool block. And this is the 1610 three-tool drilling spindle. These mount in two different positions on the back upper block and can also be mounted on the Type 5 and Type 7 in the gang tool block so you get in, uh, in working tools. Now the Type 5 is slightly different in the back block has five fixed positions. None of these can be live. We do not have a live tool option for the Type 5. It's also important to note that the Type 5 is not a model that we will uh, import in stock into the United States. It can be special ordered from the factory if necessary, but we are stocking the Type 7 and Type 8. Some significant productivity improvements have been made on the, uh, the this latest generation of the N. And one of the things is we've uh, changed the uh, new style of turret tooling. We've uh, increased the torque and horsepower on all spindle motors. Five axis simultaneous machining is now possible. The machine bed has been redesigned for more strength. There now has a guide bushingless function. The operating panel has been redesigned. The human interface is redesigned for more clarity and ease of use. It's have a larger access door to make it easier to work in the machine. First thing is the uh, single tank turret drive. We've changed the style of the turret into now it's a single drive unit. You see here on the left is the old style gear driven. Uh, in the old, the old previous versions, every one of the turret tools operated simultaneously. With the new one, with the single tank drive turret tool, only one tool operates at the same time. By doing so, it suppresses abnormal heat output, vibration, and power loss, allows for a more higher accuracy and more powerful machining. And it, by eliminating the unnecessary rotation of the tool, it extends the life of the big gears and bearings. It is important to note, though, that if you have an older style M, the live tools in your older style M will not work on the new M. So that is something to be aware of if you uh, have one of the older machines. However, the static tools are interchangeable. So if you've got a 
static tools for an older style M, they will work on this machine. So let's take a quick look at the video you can see here. Only one spindle turning at the same time. For those of you that have M's, familiar with the fact that one spindle on the all rotate in this case. Hey, Glenn, you're uh, breaking up again. Uh, try to turn the audio off on uh, the videos if you're going to speak on top of them. So as I said, some of the advantages is only a um, you can get high, one of the advantages is increased horsepower with this. The strength of gears increase. So we now have spindle turrets gone up to three horsepower and up to 22 newton meters of torque, which is most twice as much as the old M. Uh, so it's a much more powerful, robust system than we've had before. Should take a quick look at some of the tooling that's available. These are the static tools. Your salesman, when you go look at this machine, can review all of these and the pricing. But just take a quick look. These are static. These are ID tool blocks for drilling. These are turning tool holders, double sided uh, fixed double holder. Having the Y axis on the turret allows you to put multiple tools on each station. These are some live rotary spindles. As you can see, you've got multiple tool, uh, spindles on each station. So even though it's a 10 station turret, you can effectively uh, double or triple the amount of tools on there. We also are offering special hobbing spindles for gear hobbing, polygon turning, and angle drilling spindles. And there's other attachments available too that your sales, sales will be happy to review with you. One of the capabilities of the machine now, which is nice, is the ability to truly pinch turn which you've got the same offset off your guide position off the foot and the gang slide. This is done uh, not with a shifted tool, but with a program shift, as you can do true pinch, pinch milling with this. Something else they've done is they've increased the rigidity of the machine by increasing the thickness of the bed from 12 millimeters to 20 millimeters. And the way the machine has been increased, 500 kilograms or approximately 1,100 pounds. It's, it's uh, significant to note that this is a single casting. It's not bolted together pieces. Also, the slide structure of the turret tool post is hardened ground box ways uh, for the X and Y axis. And the sliding support for the back headstock spindle has been re redesigned so that it reduces the overhang of the headstock as much as possible, further strengthening the structure of the headstock. So a much more rigid, solid machine now than we've had in the past. Another new feature of this generation of the M5 series is uh, the ability now to switch from non, into non-guide bushing mode, as we've seen in some of the other CINCOMs. Uh, 320 millimeter machining length with the guide bushing, about 12, 12 and a half inches, with a 2.5, two and a half times the diameter uh, machining length when you're using the guide non-guide bushing mode. It takes approximately 30 minutes to change one of these out once you've experienced it, so it's a very fast changeover. It's something that can be done uh, by your operators on the floor very easily. Another new design is the way the, the sheet metal structures line for easier access. The door and windows enlarged by 65%. Those of you that know me know I'm a pretty big guy. I can easily fit inside here to work on this machine where in the past it was very cramped space. Uh, don't have a, any person staying there, but the, you note there's a significant amount of room here now, much more visibility. Talk about a couple of more key features of the machine. We've already discussed the uh, adjustable angle spindle on the back tool post. Um, and the B axis we'll talk about, as well as the uh, ability now to go to 38 millimeter. So we've got your B axis that uh, has four slides tool spindles with four forward facing and four back facing. You've got a machining range of 105 degrees in the front and 45 degrees on the back. So let's take a look at, there's two uh, ways of utilizing the B-axis. The one is just what we call an axis coordinate rotation, where the B-axis is rotated to a set angle. X, Y, and Z now become virtual with the Z-axis being the tool. So let's take a look at this. Those of you that aren't aware, Citizen CENCOM has made programming these angles very simple simplify as much as possible. Basically, you program the angle, start from the endpoint, the machine does all the calculations, but you know this is a calculation that has to be uh, made to get that angle just right. The y-axis. The machine does all that calculation. 
Hey, Glenn, you're uh, breaking tool up. Tool setting is very easy. You just set the tool as you would a normal tool, and the machine knows where the start position is going to be. Uh, something that I think uh, our competitors don't do as well. So that is a, a competitive advantage we have, even with machines with other B axis from our competitors. So be sure to note that. Have your salesman or the application engineer review programming you programming that with you. The other function is what they call tool center point. This uh, keeps the tool, the tip of the tool is the program path. This allows for the real five axis machining. Let's take a look at this operation here. You can see it's a little more complex. A different method of programming, but still the CINCOM makes it fairly uh, relatively easy to do. Tool settings very easy. Okay, here's another demo video demonstrating the uh, TCP programming. Hey, Glenn, your audio is breaking up. I think there might be volume on the audio on the video, so you might have to turn that off. Another programming function is 3D chamfering function where you, uh, as you know, when you put a cross hole in a, in a part, it's very difficult to get an even chamfer around it with this 3D chamfering. You can follow the contour of the cross hole. And even with a specialized tool, you can come in from the inside and chamfer on the inside of a cross hole, eliminate any burrs on the inside of an ID. The eccentric function, uh, turning function is a part of the machine. You can actually turn off center. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't have a video showing that, but that's really a neat function to see this working. You can also do a thread cutting, can drill and cycle and tapping eccentrically with this function. Something else of significance is now the back, the main and the subspindle motors are, they have the same motor. So they generate the same horsepower, up to 10 horsepower. Um, Rotary tools in the gang post, post also have their power increased. It's doubled from previous generations, now three horsepower on the gang tool post. Z-axis feed is increased, uh, two horsepower force, so you get more uh, thrust if you're doing some heavy duty drilling. Machine now comes with a 38 millimeter option, which means you can increase the capacity of the machine from 32 to 38 millimeters by changing out the guide bushing and the spindle sleeves. Uh, something else that's significant is that the gang, the pitch on the gang tools here is now great enough to accommodate that 38 millimeters so you don't have to buy a separate block if you do this 38 millimeter option. Hey Glenn, uh, we have a question here. Uh, We've so changed the parts catcher a little bit to help they keep parts cleaner, keep chips from getting in there. So you see now here this it's closed during machine operation, only opens up when you want to drop a part in the parts catcher. This keeps a lot of chips from getting into the basket so you don't have as big mess to separate. Something else they've had is spindle coolers and sensors on the machine. So there's a thermal displacement correction sensors uh, throughout the machine so that it uh, automatically adjusts for any thermal growth. And then the um, cooling devices have been added to the spindles to keep them cooler. There's two of them. There's one for the back and one for the main. Something else that's significant is uh, you can now set your tools on the turret tool post just like you would the gang tools. There's a tool set page. You can set your core and diameter. You no longer have to use G50 coordinate shifts to adjust your tool or you don't need the uh, presetter. It can be set right on the machine just as you would with your uh, um, gang tool post. Interference check function is no longer one size fits all. The uh, interference that can be adjusted to the mounted tool holder and it can be disabled or enabled for any of the tool blocks. So it's not just one or under, one and none. It's uh, you can adjust according to the best optimization that you need. The coolant tool block, gang tool block is already ported for through tool 
high pressure coolant so you can mount uh, some tools that run right through the tool spindles. So far, NTK and Toshiba Tungaloy are the two uh, manufacturers that make tooling to accommodate this. We're working with some other manufacturers to uh, provide uh, tooling that allows through coolant right off the, the gang plate. So you don't have to have the, uh, the uh, manifold block here to get your high pressure coolant through the tools. Joe, is everybody awake out there? I'm not hearing any questions. Okay. All right, uh, we've enlarged the coolant, coolant tank to 78 gallon capacity. It comes ready for a chip conveyor. Something else we've added is uh, two uh, pumps to increase the flow. There's a primary pump and a secondary pump. So you have to accommodate the capacity of the pumps. The chip conveyor is available as with all our machines. It comes ready to accommodate this. As I showed you earlier, we've got a uh, parts unloading handle gripper. That's been changed in the design a little bit. You not only need three types of fingers instead of four. It can also be used in conjunction with the long workpiece unit, so you don't have to take it off if you do want to use a long workpiece unit. So a little bit of savings in terms of setup. An optional workpiece conveyor with a width of 90 millimeters can be operated by commands in the NC program or from the operation panel. Uh, it also has a switch box on the side as an option that you can turn it on and off with the switch box. Spindle speeds, uh, the main and sub spindles have stayed the same at 8,000 RPMs. Cross tool spindles have increased to 9,000 RPMs, which is one and a half times greater than the uh, previous versions. The turn and the back tool spindles are still 6,000 RPMs. Okay. Let's pause for a second. I don't think uh, we're communicating with Joe. There might be some questions out there that I'm not hearing. Uh, so far, there isn't any questions right now. All right. Okay. Okay, well, let's move on. Horsepowers have changed a little bit. Uh, the main and sub spindle now is uh, increased up to uh, 7.4 kilowatts on the uh, rated, so it's uh, significantly higher. As I said, the cross tool spindles are now three horsepower over double what they used to be. The turret tool is also significantly higher. It used to be a half a horsepower, now it's up to three. So they've increased the power of the, the live spindles significantly. As with all our SYNCOMs, Yeah, having a little trouble hearing Joe Soriano here, so let, give me a second. Could be because I turned my speaker off, Joe. All right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Now I can. I have my speaker off, Joe. Sorry about that. How okay. many questions have I missed? Uh, there was just two, but there is one right now. Are the machine variables the same? Uh, I can't say for sure that they're exactly the same, no. In terms of what the the custom variables, I, I, I wouldn't know the answer to that right now. I haven't checked them. And that was the only question as of now. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, as with all our machines, we include almost every control option available. I did want to highlight something about the cutting feed rate. Uh, at the, at the feed rate is up to eight meters a minute. You can convert that to inches. X2 is four meters. But one that's significant is the C1 and C2 is now it's gone to 70, 
72,000 degrees per minute or 200 RPMs, but it's also capable of a maximum of 1 million degrees a minute, depending on the application. For those of you that do a lot of uh, C-axis work, this could be significant in terms of how you are, your, your productivity improvements. So I just want to point that out. But let's just take a look at all the pages, several. As I said, almost every uh, control option that you would need is available as a standard function of this machine. Your salesman will go over with you, and I think there may be four at the most options that you could purchase. So anything that you would need is available as a standard function of the machine. Machining specifications are such as, like as I said, uh, the max diameter can go up to 38 millimeters. The standard is 32. Machining link is a little over 12 and a half inches, 12.59 inches, with the main spindle speed of up to 8,000 RPMs. The rotary tool spindle speed on the gang tool is 9,000 on the turret at six. The max diameter on the backside is 32. Uh, back spindle front ejection length is 5.7. You can eject out the front, 8,000 RPMs on the back spindle speed. And uh, horsepower rating is, uh, 12 kVA, the input power, that's how much power is needed to come in. So size of the machine, 9,480 9, pounds. You can see this horsepower rating 7.3 to 10, it was five. Uh, rotary tool is now three horsepower, 1.3 in the back, three horsepower on the turret. So these are some basic layouts. The same collets and guide bushings you would use on your other M's are used on this one as well. Uh, we have a question here, Glenn. Uh, yeah. Does the C axis stroke out still? C axis stroke out? Uh, that I don't know. Brian, send me there and know the answer to that one. I I can't say for sure. Okay, thank you. It depends on. It probably depends on the circumstances. I know. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to get the answer to you. Uh, if you upgrade to the 38 millimeter, what is the diameter of the spin spindle? Of the, sp the diameter of the spindle? Well, the diameter doesn't change. It's just the sleeve that changes so that it can accommodate 38 millimeters. And then you change the guide bushing. The subspindle can have a 38 millimeter uh, pickoff call. It doesn't have, the subspindle does, it only goes 32 through spindle. You can't go 38 through it. Does that answer the question? Thank you. All right. OK, we've changed the, the design of the keyboard and the screen has been changed. It's now a touch screen. As you, if you've seen the D25, very familiar, very touch screen. It's got a QWERTY keyboard, so those are very familiar with your computer. So you, if you know how to type on your computer, this should be much easier to use. Um, they've also done some things as far as the color scheme. It's been that they've, they've done some research and found that people look at colors differently. So let's make it a little bit easier for people to read and understand. Um, so it's just a much more user friendly. It's got the latest Mitsubishi unit. The, the, the screen is 15 inches. It's a touch screen design. Uh, with the QWERTY keyboard, data input can be a lot easier. Input and outputting programs have changed a little bit. Uh, you now use an SD memory card. Compact flash cards are no longer used. You can use a USB card, a stick. Also the standard RS-232 and Ethernet is capable. And as with our other machines, you can run a sub program from the SD card. So let's talk a little bit about CINCOM control. You know, for those of you familiar with our machines or with others, you know that Citizen CINCOM is, is a very unique control. We've uh, we put our own software in there. So about 90% of what you're seeing on there is our software. It's, uh, we use, utilize the Mitsubishi M70, which accommodates this very well. And uh, some of the things we can do with this is the Syncom features. Machining data page, this is central to how you program our, our machines. On this data page, you input data such as the uh, uh, material diameter, you call up the cutoff tool, the part length, uh, all the, for all the uh, key features of the program are set in there. And from that, we get a lot of automatic functions that we can utilize. We have very user-friendly graphics. We also have an on-machine program check using high-speed check and also by a hand wheel, which I'll show you in a second. And there's auto program error detection, which is called CNC, like CNC spell check, as you're inputting some codes in there. If something is, it gets in it wrong, the machine will tell you it's wrong. 
And the superimposition mode, which we talked about earlier, how you can bring multiple tools into the cut simultaneously utilizing our G600 codes. That's a feature that's definitely unique to CINCOM. Nobody else can do it. So the CINCOM control. A user-friendly note here. When it, this is the dating page, data page. So anytime you highlight it, it actually shows you a graphic of what it is you're setting. So that's, you know, guesswork. So each one of these uh, sections here will pull up a different graphic picture. We also have an M and G codes on screen help list. So if you're doing some editing on the machine, you need a code and you don't want to run back to your book, you can just pull it up right on the screen and see what it is. Give you a definition. The auto CNC code syntax. So if you're inputting something, it'll actually give you a, an error code and tell you what you did wrong and what you need to change. I think a very nice function there. Alarm retention and save in all systems. This is a good function if you're uh, doing some editing on the machine or doing some setup and you find these alarms occurred. And uh, for example, it's the end of the shift and you haven't had a chance to repair it. You can go and tell the guy next to the operator following you what something was wrong and he can go right to the machine, run it through and see exactly where the errors occurred and know what's wrong so he can fix that. So that's a very good feature as far as helping uh, communication between operators. Now, something else we do is uh, um, overlap T codes and mode selection. So in this case, like if you're changing tools from the machining data, the, the, the machine knows how far it needs to clear this tool, what the diameter tool is. So it doesn't have to retract all the way back, come across and retract in. It can make a nice flow to come around and just clear it. So it's a minimal amount of distance it has to travel. It also does it very smoothly, very rapidly. You can save a, a fraction of a second, but those fractions of seconds add up over time. Another function is the uh, direct command spindle C-axis. You don't have to stop your spindle and orient to zero to find your indexing, so you just stop it at whatever angle. So you could be running at 4,000 RPMs. So you need to make a cut at 45 degrees to a feature. You just index it to 45 degrees. The machine stops automatically. It saves you a little bit of time. The other thing is uh, axis overlap for uh, for the smooth threading. Standard uh, single point threading is you have to run your Z axis, go straight out and X, come back in Z, come back down. With the, with this thing is you can come down in Z, come out and you overlap the X and the Z axis. So it saves time, makes a much smoother threading cycle. Again, this can save six uh, seconds off the cycle time. We mentioned the high speed program check on machine check to run it. You can do the spindle speed. So let's take a look at, okay. Let's take a look at this video and show you what we're talking about here. From high speed check function, it'll just actually press a button and it'll run through the program. And while it's doing that, it's checking for syntax errors, code format errors. Check if there's an over travel, syncing time, estimate and estimate your cycle time. Now, the other thing we can do is the on program check by hand wheel. For those of you that own a shop or managers, you'll love this one because if it's used properly, you can virtually eliminate it, absolutely eliminate any crashing because the programmer or the operator has complete control of how the machine runs at his speed so that if any errors are made in the program or in the setup, you can catch them before the machine crashes. crashes. So, this feed handle will run, the, it'll actually run the machine program to see the tools all operating at whatever speed the handle has moved. So you can see here, he's operating it, he's moving up. You control at your own speed, forward and backwards, and you can edit it. So if your operator is paying attention while he's doing this, you can see that an, an error is made. For example, uh, if you're going to bring a drill over and you saw that the programmer forgot to retract the material and the drill was going to hit the the material and break off, you can stop it, reverse it, correct the error, and then move on without risk of crashing, crashing the machine. Very, very useful, powerful tool in the setting up and saving time and saving expense. You all know what a crash machine can cost you in downtime and expense and getting repairs done. You can reverse it. As I said, if you find an error that you need to, you just reverse it, correct the error, and then move on.
Something else we've added to this is uh, user auth authorization or user authentication. You can control who can tool set tools. You can control who program can edit programs. You can control who makes parameter changes. There's four levels. There's a zero level, which basically if somebody has zero level privileges, all they can do is press the start button and possibly make an offset. But you can't do any tool setting, can't do any program editing, do parameter changes. Level one setting uh, permitted the phone operations are enabled with the door open. You can run the handle mode, so you can check the uh, the program check. You can open and close the collets. Uh, you can do start point, positioning point, retract, access retract, manual tool setting, adjustments, and then turning coolant on and off. So basically it's an operator level. Uh, level two is where the program editors, so the programmer can come out and make edited, edit, editing changes, the permitted overwrite programs. And uh, then the level three is where the parameter changes. This is the highest level that you want to set up. So you can control who has access to these with a uh, actually a, a password code. Uh, can give you a lot of control, especially for those in medical and aerospace where you really have to do a lot of process controls. This gives you a, a powerful function to, to use. Some of the things regarding the environmental aspects of this, this, the machine now is centrally lubricated, so that eliminates any need for greasing ball screws. Uh, it's decreased the amount of air consumption. There's a, a monitoring of machine operating status. There's an idling stop mode, which if the machine is sitting idle for a certain set period of time, then all the servo motors will turn off, saving you power. Screen saver, obviously turns the screen off when it's not being used. And it's also been manufactured with a lot of environmentally product, friendly products. There's a, there's a significant number of products in here now that are recyclable or friendly to the environment. So Citizen takes this very, very seriously. One of the things here, the machine operating status screen, you can actually come and see uh, what features have been running. It measures automatic operation, alarm stop time, setup time, non-operation time, and power off time, and it displays them graphically. This can be output as a CSF file, so this is just a real basic uh, production monitoring system on there. Comes right with the machine. You don't have to buy anything aftermarket if you don't need anything more significant than this. Something else that's uh, on the machine or it's in the process of being tested right now is tool monitoring function. This is used to monitor the cutting load on the feed axis and spindles. You can detect abnormalities in the tool by detecting changes in the cutting load compared to preset reference point. The machine will generate alarms and stop operation. Citizen's been using this in the Miano quite effectively for some time now. We've now introduced it on the uh, the M series, so this can help you with uh, um, in monitoring your tool loads and monitoring your tool wear and setting, optimizing your processes. We do have some options that are being developed or coming on, on board that will soon be available. LFV will be available on this machine. Uh, we're expecting the first LFV ready machines to leave the factory at the end of July. Note that if you have an M5 now, it cannot be added to a current machine. You'll have to wait until an M5 uh, ready machine is available. It will be available on all models, the 5, 7, and the 8. And it's available on all ac the axes. It's available on the X1, Z1, X3, and Z3. Modes 1, 2, and 3 will be available on the with the LFE on the M32. CAV 32s are not yet available. They'll be in stock at the end of August, and we're also working on a, setting everything up for the high pressure pump. Uh, that's not quite ready yet, but it will be. Uh, uh, Glenn, we have a question there. Yes. Uh, does the lube go into saver mode as well? The lube go into saver mode? Correct. I. Don't know exactly if it's a servo motor, then it would go into saver mode, yes, if it's servo code, but I don't know for sure. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now, as I've, have you seen, this machine is very capable. It's got a lot of great functions on it. Let's take a look at the video that's really going to illustrate a lot of the, the great things this machine done. I'm not doing the drilling because everybody knows about drilling. That's, that's standard, but let's see what the other functions of this machine as far as the B axis and how it can operate and the speed of the machine. Also, I want to point out, if you do need any uh, cam software, Esprit is a very good uh, system for posting out to these machines. Uh, very helpful when you're doing the five axis machining.
Take note of the speed of this machine and the way the tool change out. It's very fast. Right now we're contouring around all these cross-working these, these edges so that you get nice chamfered edges all the way around so the machine can contour all the way around it. Without this feature, there's going to be a lot of costly time and expense put into de hand deburring these parts with not the same amount of control. Due to the angle drilling that I talked about earlier. Note in the corner there, the back tool, back spindle is working simultaneously. The Esprit profit milling functions that can reduce the cycle time and milling out these pockets. Milling at an angled plane with the B axis. I can't get the door, Kim. Okay. Hold on, Kate. Glenn, we have a question. Is there no LOV for Z2 for pitch turning? Uh, I don't think so, no. Just the axis that we showed up on the screen. As you can see from this, the very complex machining capabilities of this machine. Again, we're uh, contouring around the, the cross pocket feature for chamfering deburring. We're superimposing different feeds to uh, rough and finish at the same time. Uh, how would the Z1, Z2 sync work if using LFV for Z1? Uh, that's a question for your application engineers. Um, I'm not, I don't have the answer to that right now. You cannot at this point. The only way to do it is to set up a mirror image and have uh, Z2, basically X2, Z2 mirror. So it's actually Z2 is not moving. And then Z1 would handle the LFV operation. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank you, Jim. A lot of things going on with this part right now, as you can see.
So you look at the back block here, see the different the cross working tool set up. So different configurations in the back block. There's some static tools back here. So as I said, all live turret tools have been redesigned. They now have a single drive, so only one tool operating at a time. Torque and horsepower have been increased on the machine. Five axis machine is now possible on both main and sub spindles. Live tool and the back tool pulse can now adjust through the entire 90 degree arc. The bed has been redesigned, so 60% thicker casting for increased rigidity. Hardened box weighs on turret tool posts like on the Miano. We can switch from guide bushing to non-guide bushing mode. We've redesigned the control panel for easier operation. Sheet metal design for large access door. Larger capacity, 70 ga 79 gallon coolant tank with two pumps. We can convert to 38 millimeter option. Spindle coolers and thermal compensation devices have been added to the machine. Improve the interface check function. Turret tool setting function has been improved now so that you can set the tools right on the turret. It's more environmentally friendly product. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you'll gain something from this. Any other questions? Uh, we have two questions. Uh, is the ladder visible? Uh, one of the apps guys can answer that. Probably through passwords. I don't know for sure, I don't know but either. I would venture a guess just like it is now through a certain sequence of uh, adjusting bits and parameters to get to it to be able to see it. Yeah. Thank you. And does 38 millimeter millimeter configuration use TF43 collet and STM38 guide like the L32? I'm going to say yes to that. Yes. Uh, yes, that that's th that is the case. And the other thing is, AGB is available for it, but it only is available up to 32 millimeter. 